Steve Bob Snipe, first flight pilot of the F-14. First sequence you will see shows the end of the second and last flight of our number one airplane. At this point, we've lost one of our hydraulic systems, and we're soon to lose the other. We're to take control of the airplane. Well, the geometry on this stick is miserable. When we designed that? I don't know. Well, okay, I don't know what's going on. Whoops. Flight control, I've lost the flight. Flight, flight control system. Uh, there you go. Oh, wait just a second. No, I can't hold it. I can't reject it. The entire sequence of canopy and two pilots leaving the airplane occurs in nine tenths of a second. From the ground camera, you see the ejection occurred about 50 feet above the trees. Bill Miller in the front seat gained about another 10 feet and landed safely ahead of the fireball. And as you will see, I started coming down into it. And luckily we had 20 knots of surface wind which uh, blew me to the leeward edge of the heat, and uh, at which point a thermal took me up. After correcting our hydraulic difficulties that caused the crash of number one, we were ready to fly the second airplane in May of 1971. On the 24th of May, we made our first takeoff on the number two airplane. airplane was instrumented and configured to explore the low speed end of the F-14 envelope. Landing at number two after a very, very successful first flight. Functionally, the airplane was absolutely clean. And this started a program in which we flew 18 flights in a five-week period. One of the early flights was to calibrate the airspeed system You'll see trailing static cone extending from the left fin tip. Using full stabilizer to determine nose wheel liftoff speed. Ear retracting, followed by flap retraction. On this airplane, the wings were fixed at 20 degrees, which is our low speed configuration. This is a takeoff in maximum aftermare, zone five. Takeoff roll is approximately 1,300 feet on this full fuel and instrumentation. In flight refueling has become routine in the F 14 program extend the flight time in the airplane. A very extensive instrumentation, all parameters being telemetered back to the ground. The only limitation on the endurance of the flight becomes that which the pilot can endure. Recently flew one flight of five and a half hours with three in-flight refuelings. feel quite comfortable in the F-14 landing pattern. Variable sweep on the F-14 allows us to manage carrier landing speeds that we haven't seen since the straight wing jets of the early 1950s. Visibility is excellent. 15 and a half degrees of downward visibility over the nose. A normal carrier landing using the mirror you can see the stern waterline of the ship at glide slope intercept. 
Most of our landings are made with a Navy type landing mirror, which establishes a glide slope of uh, three and a quarter or three and a half degrees. Speed brakes are extended to add drag to the engine power in a better regime for the approach. They retract automatically when you advance the throttles to the intermediate power setting. Part of the number two task will be to uh, investigate stall characteristics. Prior to doing that, we installed a stall chute, and this sequence shows the check out of that chute up at 25,000 feet. Ballistically deployed. And its purpose is to reduce the angle of attack if uh, the airplane is either uncontrollable or uh, requires a nose over that the controls can't handle. Prior to flying any of the airplanes, we do extensive engine runs on the ground. This shows maximum afterburning, our TF-30 engine. In addition to its suit of missiles, Phoenix, Sparrow, and Sidewinder, the F-14 carries an M-61 rapid-firing 20-millimeter gun. Here it's shown in ground firing tests. In August of 1971, we flew the 1X airplane. This is a replacement for the airplane we lost last December. Its mission is to fill in the high-speed end of the F-14 envelope. And it's configured with Flutter excitation devices, shakers. The purpose of the shakers is to try to induce flutter and show that the airplane is free from any flutter tendencies. First takeoff of the 1X airplane, 31st of August. Again, is made in zone one after there. And again, the gear and flaps were left down until we climbed to altitude. In the second flight of the 1X airplane, we swept the wings back to 50 degrees, seen here. Here in company with a Chase F-4. We use F-4 Chase airplanes for the high-speed airplane. Wing sweep operation was very smooth indeed. Wings are here shown sweeping from 20 degrees fully forward to this 68 degree full aft position. Very minor longitudinal trim change. Slight nose down on sweeping aft, slight nose up sweeping forward. In a fully swept condition, lateral control is by use of differential tail. F-14 can sweep its wings at the full rate of seven degrees per second up to the full envelope of seven and a half G's. The landing gear on the F-14 is sturdy as you'd expect of a carrier airplane. It's designed for 24 and a half feet per second sink rate. But with the low approach speeds of the F-14, we expect sink rates on the carrier to fall between 8 and 12 feet per second. This should give the F-14 a good carrier landing safety record. F-14 
14 is a very easy airplane to land in a carrier type approach. It seems to fall into a groove at the approach speeds we're recommending, which have ranged from 115 knots to about 123 knots, depending on fuel weight. Use pop-up spoilers for ground roll braking. That, in company with the anti-skid brakes, gives us ground rolls of less than 2,500 feet. Ground handling of the F-14 has really been superb. Excellent nose wheel steering. Good turning radius. In fact, when it's the tightest turn, the uh, back of the inboard wheel. That's an important point on maneuvering on board of the, the cramped flight deck of a carrier. Gives you an idea of the visibility that both crew members have. The visibility from the rear seat is as good or better as it is from the front.